Greetings, 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 and welcome to Heal Talk Tuesdays with Lisa. It's so good to be here with you, isn't it? It is a June 18th. Hello, Alex. Hello, Harry. How are you doing? It's so good to have you right here live. I'm going to take a few moments and say hello to all those who are coming. It's uh, it's absolutely amazing that uh, being on time and everything, it's uh, seeing so many people. Hello, Andre. Hello, Rupak. How are you? Hi, Andrian. So good to have you all. Today is a day I am so energetic. Hello, Jirai. Um, so I'm going to take a few moments to say hello to all. Hi, good to be here. Same here. For those of you who do not know me, I am Lisa Mbubari, your expert hypnotherapist and stress management consultant. I have a business called Heal Within, and that's where transformation begins. Today, I'm going to be talking about something that I hope you all join in. Let's make it into a conversation. Let's talk about self-doubt and anxiety how sometimes we feel anxious what to do about anxiety i'm going to give you tools and techniques and at the end i'd like to do a five minute guided visualization so that you can just sit back relax close your eyes and listen so why did i come up with it hello lilia um why did i come up with this because I just had a client a few days ago, actually at the end of last week, that came in feeling so anxious as if her anxiety was to the roof. And when I like to gauge people, it's about what are you feeling, what's going on inside, what are you here for, and what would you like me to help you with? See, there's times that I can help someone but what it is it that they need help with is the main thing so sitting in here instead of relaxing she was so anxious and she said i'm here because of my confidence looking at her she had a lot of anxiety going on so before i even work on the confidence i'd like to know what's going on how come so anxious and she came to the story her anxiety was if we say from the scale of one to 10, she was at an eight and a half, nine. So I have to take my clients into a relaxation before we can talk about the issues that they are with. So do you know her anxiety was created by what the perception of what a hypnotherapist and hypnosis is all about? I bet you you have uh, experienced the same. So here's my question to you. Have you experienced hypnosis by choice? That's the key word. So many have experienced hypnosis. You go in and out of hypnosis every single day. But when I say by choice, that means, have you chosen and made an appointment to go see a hypnotherapist or have you seen a hypnosis on stage and gone up on stage to be part of the show well here's let me know if it is a yes you can say one for yes or just type yes i want to know how many of you have truly experienced hypnosis knowingly for a reason now some may share that and others may not. Here's the key. We go in and out of hypnosis every day. So there is nothing to be anxious about. When you sit in the car and you drive and you get somewhere, you automatically go into that state of knowing. Hello, Joan. How are you? Um, here is one of my fellow hypnotherapists, the expert hypnotherapist. It's so good to have you here. Hello, Michael. Hi, Val. So when we talk about hypnosis, in a way, it's an internal process, not an external force. I've said this over and over. 
So when a client comes in anxious, I want to make sure that they feel safe, they feel confident, they feel relaxed and comfortable enough with me before we even do anything. See, I cannot force hypnosis or any kind of a therapy on someone until the time they feel relaxed, that they know what it feels like, what they are getting into. So I usually offer a 15 minute consultation. Most of my clients, I can say about 80% of my clientele are refer based. So when a client has come in, they have received a great result, they refer clients to me. So in a way, it's a testimonial based or a referred base. As they come in, I meet with them and I sit back. It's not what I can do for you. It's not what I can do to you, but what is it that I can do for you? And in order for me to do something for my clients, they need to know what is it that they want, what is it that they came in for, plus, plus the most important thing, what is it that they want? It's not what you don't want in life. It's like saying, I no longer want to feel this anxiety. That's great. I know that. I can help you with that. But what is it that you want to feel? Truly, do you want to feel more at peace? Do you want to feel calmer? Do you want to feel calm when at places that it's unknown or that when there is a trigger, whatever the trigger is, that because we can help you with that, if there is a trigger or uncertainty, that you can find a tool within yourself. It's like that staples button that you push and you feel calmer, not necessarily zoned out and at peace, but more at peace, more calmer, more in control. And once we feel that, then that internal talk, the negative talk or self-doubt fades away enough for you to feel confident to speak and to express what is it that you want in life. So uh, let me give you an example. A, a client of mine who came in for uh, a change and it was uh, for her absolute uh, problem that she had, she could not sleep. So insomnia is what she came in for. She could not sleep more than four hours. She's constantly sleeping and waking up. And of course, you know, I never reveal the name of my clients, but insomnia. Have you ex uh, experienced insomnia? You see, insomnia is something that you experience due to other factors, because naturally we go to sleep. Our body is designed to go to sleep. Everything sleeps. Flowers sleep, animals sleep, uh, nature goes to sleep, uh, birds and animals. Humans naturally tend to go to sleep because of our time clock. We need to sleep. Our body needs to sleep in order to replenish. So her anxiety created by other factors in her life did not allow her to sleep. Plus, she did not give herself permission to sleep. Now, all this, when you combine it together, it creates an anxiety that I can't sleep because I can't sleep. I'm awake all the time because I'm awake all the time. I can't sleep. And that's another added anxiety. So in a way she was going into this down world spiral of creating self doubt. Why can't I sleep? There must be something wrong with me? What if there's something wrong with my mind? What if there's something wrong with my body? And then from I can't sleep to creating all this negative notions, negative thoughts of something is wrong. Now that's an added negativity. So what we did first and foremost, 
is ask you to sit back and just be. Have you experienced going into that spiral of negativity, not being able to relax? So instead of saying the word relax, I said, why can't, will you just sit and be? It's a little bit of a confusion, but just being is giving yourself permission to just be. No expectations. I'm not telling her to relax. I'm not telling her to do anything except would you give yourself permission to just be? And it can be anything. And as she's relaxing a little bit more, I said, just allow yourself, sit back. Let the couch, let the recliner hold your weight. Give permission for your body to drop into the recliner. And by asking her to give herself permission, believe it or not, from being here, she sat back. Mm. That's giving herself permission to sit back. To sit back and be more aware of surrounding. And that's what I did. I asked her to be more aware of all the surrounding. Because from the moment we walk in, we automatically, subconsciously, we take in everything that surrounds us. In case you didn't know, there's this internal projector that goes do 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 It takes all that information and holds it in. And when you are, if you have experienced this, uh, show me by a yes, just hashtag yes. If you have experienced that when you are hyperventilating, when you are stressed, when you are doing, it's as if nothing surrounding you matters. Nothing really makes any sense except what you are feeling. And at that very moment, even what I am saying, it doesn't make a difference until you give yourself permission just to hold, become still, and Yes, the word relax, but when someone is anxious, you can't tell them to relax. It's a contradiction. It's a contradiction to say someone who is hyperventilating to relax. But what we can do is ask them, just allow yourself, allow yourself. That means I'm not in control. You give yourself permission. You give yourself the, uh, the permission. You give yourself the suggestions. Okay, and what we really want in life is to be in control. So if I'm giving you the key to control yourself, that is what you need. So by doing so, you can also control your body temperature, your body, uh, the way you breathe and become more relaxed or calm down and As she sat back, I said, how do you feel now? Are you calmer? Yes. Good. When you are ready to speak and share, share, not tell me, but share what's going on. I am right here. I'm waiting until you are ready. I'll wait and hold space for you until you are ready. It didn't take more than two minutes. So what we do in life is, this is the difference between someone who comes in and says, I want to be hypnotized or I am here to do the therapy is creating the rapport and give the key, the control back to my client. Here's the whole key is that no time does any doctor and anyone in authority Even as a therapist, we have absolute no control over our client. The client is in control. Even when they are hyperventilating, it's holding space for them to be able to calm down, to share what is going on so that we can help with what needs to be. So anxiety is created internally. So she has.
had created this entire anxiety, not only with me, but at night. So when she's anxious, she cannot sleep. When she cannot sleep, she's awake. When she's awake, she is thinking, analyzing, criticizing, dwelling on the things that she, that she needs to, and unfortunately creating this negative notion of what is wrong instead of being in control and saying, compartmentalize this, compartmentalize that, compartmentalize the next one, and I will focus on it tomorrow morning. Until then, I, there's two things that can happen. I stay on guard in order to protect my body and I have a sharp mind. If you are supposed to be on guard for your child, on guard for something, or you're a scout and you're on guard for the rest of the troop, and that is your job. If it is your job for you to be on guard on like being the protector of something, then yes, you have to be awake. If you are a on the uh, a controller, on a dispatch, if that is your job, and if you are dozing off, you need to fall asleep, then you need to be on guard and awake that entire time. So I can also ask uh, and share and give the tools and the techniques for my client for them to stay awake for the duration of six hours or eight hours and be sharp and focused during that time. You see, you can command your mind to do so. When you go to work, instead of dozing off, you can also command self-hypnosis, training yourself, training your body, training your mind that for the duration of six hours or eight hours, my mind will stay sharp and focused and on point because this is my time to be on guard. And it's like the Maslow's, uh, uh, Maslow's uh, command system that we do the training. It's the placebo effect that you give your mind, even though it's not there, it perceives that to be the reality and makes that the reality. So in a way, our mind, just training like a dog, we train our mind to stay focused for the duration of whatever it is that needs to be on guard. The rest of the time, we can also, by commanding our mind or self-hypnosis that I teach my client to do, no matter where they are, either at work, at home, the best time to do this is give commands and affirmations before going to sleep at night, that as I go to sleep, as I drift into sleep, here's the thing, you go into hypnosis, then you drift into the beta state, and then you go into that uh, deeper level to go into hypnosis before you go into sleep. Hmm. It's stages and stages and stages. So in that hypnotic state, which is this state of awakeness and deep sleep, you give the suggestions. Or I help my client learn how to give themselves the suggestions that as I am drifting into sleep, I give myself and my mind permission to sleep. My body is ready to sleep. Every nerve and every muscle and every organ in my body is awake functioning to its fullest as I drift into sleep for the duration of six hours or eight hours. And as I come to awakeness, I come to full awakeness, fully awake, fully aware, in order for me to move forward in my life, full wellness, healthy, sharp in mind and in body, rested in body. So this entire technique of helping my clients go from anxiety to rest, to being safe and sound. It's creating a trust, not only with me, 
but a trust with themselves, trusting their mind. Yes, it can happen. So what I do also is ask my client, I'm asking you, do you recall a time and a place that you trusted your mind to have all the answers, right? Most times it is a yes. Do you recall a time and a place where your body is rested fully and completely like lounging in a hammock or when you are on a beautiful rift drifting on the waves in a we start with a swimming pool like on the summertime if you have gone on a vacation and you're just drifting on this beautiful water draft right mm -hmm. yes how about another time and a place waking you can just close your eyes and like a little girl or boy just roll over in the beautiful hilltops on a grass and smell the grass and just be one with nature and just open your eyes and you see the clouds just going by yes those times you trust your body all of these times we trust our body our body knows exactly how when to go to sleep and when to come to full awakeness so when you feel anxious just give yourself permission to imagine those places as a matter of fact, sitting right here, right now, or as you are listening to this recording, if you are live, just say live or just show me an emoji. And if it is a replay, just show hashtag replay that I can respond to you at another time. Because I want to know if you have experienced insomnia and how did you give yourself permission to relax? How did you give yourself these suggestions to roll over and sleep? What helped you to sleep? And if you have stayed out uh, up all night feeling anxious and everything, what did you do? I know some people get up and watch TV, some read, some get back on their Facebook to check out what's going on and they just spend another hour being awake and alert you see when you take your mind off of what is focusing you uh, what you're focusing not focusing you but what you're focusing on it's a good diversion but being awake and reading it also keeps you awake for some, it helps them sleep. Others, music. Some, get up and make coffee, drink coffee, and go back to sleep. So, you know what? There is no formula. There is no perfect formula what helps you sleep. But to divert your attention from going into that negative spiral of being uh, awake the entire time and not wanting to sleep make sure you're doing one thing don't lay there and say i can't sleep i can't sleep i can't sleep i want to sleep i can't sleep because i can't sleep is reiterating i can't what if you just give yourself permission and say i'm ready to sleep sleep comes to me naturally Sleep comes to me effortlessly. I know how to sleep. <sighs> and become very focused right here from the breath that you breathe. As a matter of fact, when you feel hyperventilating, and feeling anxious at that very moment focus in the palm of your hand and if you feel sweaty and damp 
and just look at the palm of your hand and put this finger and touch the wetness. Just focus on the palm of your hand and love it. Become one with that feeling. And just put your hand and just focus. And as you do that, believe it or not, you are loving yourself. And your body feels as if you are caressing, pampering, loving, and becoming one with whatever it is going on. So instead of going into a negative spiral, you caress, you become one, and this is the most positive thing that you can do because it creates love. It creates attention from you to you. It creates a focused attention. So at wherever you are, if you take one minute so that you know that you are safe and close your eyes, just close your eyes and blink and then open your eyes again. Breathe in and exhale. And when you are ready, when you are ready, you can close your eyes knowing that you are safe. And at this very moment, with your eyes closed, place your, the palm of your hands together. And if you want, you can even intertwine. And just allow the palm of your hand the palm to connect and you can even make your hands put like this and just concentrate on each and every one of your fingers and as you concentrate just imagine as if they are so tight as if they are glued the palm glued to one another and the only thing you can feel is that sensation between the palm of your right hand and left hand. And as you feel that loving energy going between the two sides, the right, the left, the left to the right, you breathe in and out easily and gently. And again, make it so tight, so tight, that even if you wanted to lift your fingers, you realize your fingers do not want to lift off because it's so loving, it's so good to be so connected, so one in mind, in body, in breath, and knowing that you are in total control. Even if you tried, you see that your fingers want to connect, to be one. And you breathe in and exhale. And then blow inside and release. Just this technique of giving yourself permission to focus right here from your right side to the left side, connect it as one and be connected to your breath. You become one with you, no matter where you are. Feeling anxiety fades away or you can just Blow it away and release it. That terpidation, release it. That worry, release it. 
Mm -hmm. You can, only if you want to. When you give yourself permission to. And by doing so, you also calm every nerve, every muscle, every organ, every tissue in your body. You see? I didn't even have to say, okay, let's take five minutes and do this relaxation. Because automatically and easily, you do it. Because at all times, you have the permission to click away or sit back and enjoy it. Now, I hope this was beneficial to you because my intention is at all times to bring something of value to you. And if I can, by all means, let me know how else may I help you? How else may I bring some information that you may need or want? that is beneficial for something that you want to experience. So allow me to read here. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. And I went to my cousin's house and talked to her about what was bothering me and finally fell asleep. Well, see, uh, most probably, many people cannot go to their cousin's house, if we in, at three o'clock in the morning, and talk about what's bothering them at early in the morning or late at night until they go to sleep. But there are those who pick up the phone and talk to someone. Or here's another thing. You can have a small little notebook next to your bed. And if you are not falling asleep, take everything from your mind, drop it onto a pen, or even a notepad and just jot down a few things that you are concentrating on. And believe it or not, your subconscious mind will bring out the best of the information, whatever it is. So you, instead of suppressing and or mulling over it all night long, you express it, release it, and you, in a way, dump it from your mind onto a paper close the papers and roll over and go to sleep hmm. see we take it from here and release it or release it in a way the technique that i just showed you the few tools that i just gave you is taking something that is bothering you creating anxiety creating worry and not knowing what to do with it by giving yourself permission to do dump it Release it and let it go outside of you, outside of your mind, until you are ready to tackle it. So today's message was how to take something that is bothering you and dump it until you are ready to deal with it. I hope I see you next week. And until then, if there is anything I can share with you, to bring it more to fruition, clarity, and focus, give me a call. You can always share by clicking the bottom and join my YouTube channel, or also send me an email or a message. This is Lisa Bubari. I look forward to seeing you next week. Until then, I wish you a universal light to protect you and may God bless you. Goodbye and good night.